Hello and welcome to worship from my house to wherever you are. It's great to see you again today. Let's start our worship as we always do by lighting our candles. Jesus said, I am the light of the world and I bring light into the darkness. And whatever darkness you are facing, I will shine and bring light and hope into your life. The Lord be with you. Amen. So I've got a riddle for you today. I wonder if you can work out what it is I'm describing. I can be sparkling, but I'm not a star. I can run, but I don't have any lakes. I can fall, but I don't get hurt. I'm found in a bath, but I'm not a rubber duck. I can help you clean, but I'm not soap. I wonder if you can work out what I was describing in that riddle. So what was the answer? Yes, that's right, it's water. I wonder how many things we wouldn't be able to do in life if we didn't have water. Let's have a little think now. Think about what you've done so far today or yesterday. What would we not be able to do without water? So what could we not do without water? Well, we would be really thirsty. We'd have nothing to drink. Clean our teeth, we couldn't do, could we? We couldn't boil the kettle because we'd have nothing to put in it, so we couldn't have a cup of tea. Cooking, washing our clothes, washing our face. There are so many things that we would not be able to do if we didn't have water. Water is incredibly precious. Our water works on a cycle. It rains and it falls, you know this. Water is precious. It keeps our world alive and flourishing. And without it, we wouldn't survive very long. Across our world, there are millions of people who do not have access to clean drinking water. There are also many parts of the world who just don't have enough water at all. Water to drink, water for their crops, water to wash in. They literally are in a drought situation, which means the rain is not falling, the rivers are dry, and there is not enough water for them to survive. I watched a television programme recently that was explaining in parts of South Africa, they have had to put a limit on the amount of water each household can use, as there just isn't the water around. The natural reservoirs have run dry and they haven't got what they need. In other parts of Africa, they are experiencing severe drought. This means their crops can't grow because the rain has not come. The rivers are dry and their animals do not have the water to drink either. In other parts of our world, there have been severe floods. These floods are getting more serious and more regular. Often whole communities are washed away. Their crops are gone, their houses have been destroyed and they are really struggling in life. Scientists know that the increase in our global temperature is causing this extreme weather, the severe droughts in some places and the extreme floods in others. Both of these are having catastrophic impact on the people that are living in those parts of the world. You see, climate change impacts on when, where and how much water falls in our world. And the increase in temperature is having a huge impact on this cycle of water. We might feel quite helpless here, but actually there are things that we can do to make changes in our lives that can affect others. You see, we are part of a global community. If we think of ourselves as a world of many people that all are neighbours, actually what we can do here actually will have an impact on other people around our world. I'm gonna read a passage from Psalm that speaks about water. It's Psalm 65, verses nine to 10. He waters the earth to make it fertile. The rivers of God will not run dry. 
He prepares the earth for his people and sends them rich harvests of grain. He waters the ground with abundant rain, showers soften the earth, melting the earth and causing seeds to sprout across the land. I wonder what this verse says to you, particularly with all we've just been thinking about, about the severe weather in parts of our world. Christians believe that God provides all the water we need to survive and grow and flourish. But what is stopping the rain falling and soaking the earth? Well, many people believe it is the climate change that we've been talking about. Mistakes made by humans have caused the rise in temperature on our earth, meaning that the rain that is falling is not falling in the right place and in the right amount. But we can all do something to help. Many Christians are passionate about climate change because they believe that God has given them this world to care for and so they have to do their part in caring for it. So here's some things that we could do to save water and to help care for our planet. The first one, think about how much water you are using. On average, each person uses 140 litres of water a day. Now, if you think about a big bottle of Coke or lemonade, that's two litres. So that's 70 bottles like that, that each person on average uses every day. And also the things that we wear and the things that we eat also need water to grow. So if you think about a pair of jeans, it takes 6,800 litres to make enough cotton for one pair of jeans. So I wonder how we can save water, but I wonder if we can use water wisely. So not buying more clothes than we need, maybe. And remembering to switch off taps and to put out buckets when it rains so that we've got water for our plants when it's drier. Let's think about how we can use water wisely. How can we care for the water that's around us? Maybe you've got a river or a pond or a canal or you live by the sea like me. How could we care for this water? Maybe we could do a litter pick. I've noticed there's a lot of rubbish on the beach near where I am and I'm going to go out with some friends and pick up the rubbish to try and stop it from going into the sea. You probably have seen lots of images of animals in the water struggling because they've got plastic around them or they've got rubbish or they've eaten stuff they shouldn't have. So how can we care for the water that we've got on our earth already? And another thing that we can do to help our planet and the water that we've got is to think about the things that we flush down the sink that goes into the waterway. Chemicals we use for cleaning or kitchen and bathroom products that get flushed down. Are these actually harmful to the water? So we can do some really simple things to help care for our water. So use water wisely, care for the water we've got around us, and think about what we are flushing down into the water system. Are those things harmful? Three really simple things that we can do to help our planet and the water that we've got. I wonder what you might do to help care for the water on our planet. I invite you now to join me in this prayer. Dear God, we pray for those who do not have enough water or access to clean water. We ask you to help those who are providing wells and pumps to bring clean water to villages and towns. We pray too for all those who are working to reduce climate change. Help us to play our part in caring for our planet and the water that falls and fills it. Thank you God that you provide all the water that we need and help us to take care of it. Amen. So I wonder what you might do to take up saving water and caring for our planet this week. But it shouldn't be just this week. It should be something that we all do from now on. So what changes might you make? Remember, water is precious. Without it, we cannot survive. And there are many people around our world who are surviving on very, very little water. So let's take care of what we've got to make a difference to those around our world that haven't got enough. So go into this week filled with love and joy and peace as you think about 
how you can do your part to care for our planet. Amen. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again soon.